you can see in the original drawing, and this is actually the, the modern brochure, my saw is much older than this, the controls are just up to the right of the blade guard, and I wanna do that same thing. So my control panel is going to be mounted about here, just as low as I can get it. Big buttons, easy to push. And to attach this, I need to go to the back of the blade guard. This, this guide slides up and down, so I can't bolt anything to this face. I need to go back here. So to accomplish that, I bought a plate. This is going to go here, and then the control box will mount onto the other side of that. That turned out great. We'll put some bolts in and then we'll take a look at mounting this on the saw head. I want the control box right in my face if I can. And the clearance issue is the upper wheel. I don't really have a great way of taking this wheel off. I'm worried about maybe something getting out of alignment if I did that. So I think I want to try to mount it around that. And so there's a little bit of space that you can see to the right of the wheel where there's the weld that holds the wrap around of the, the top head against the back plate. I can pull this orange blade guard off. So I'm gonna measure over and I'm gonna drill two holes um, that are just to the left of the seam between the edge and the back plate. And then I think there'll be enough overhang on the um, the metal mounting bracket that will get a good solid mount for this even with only the two bolts that will be out of the way of the operation of the saw. For mounting the control box to the saw, I'm going to have my assistant help me hold it on the saw and then I'll mark them with a transfer punch and then hand the drill in a minute. After adjusting the radius of this with the belt sander, I've got a trial fit here. You can see that it's proud of the table just a little bit. So I'm gonna put it back on the mill and we're gonna buzz this off, make it a little thinner, and then put some set screws in so that we can fine tune the height. Well folks, this is one of those times when things work out perfectly. We're gonna call that good. There's a little bit of a lip on the leading edge, which won't matter because the material gets pushed this way. It's almost perfect at the back. I'm gonna trim off the end of this to be flush, and I'm gonna leave it alone. I think it's good enough the way that it is, and it's not going anywhere. It's a friction fit, so I don't think the set screws will be necessary, and uh, this worked out better than I expected. A few days have passed, and quite a bit of work's been done off camera, so I'll catch you up here. I've mounted our controls box to the top of the saw. You can see the, the bolts that I drilled through the head and our piece of uh, steel plate. So that's ready to go. I've got a knockout on the bottom, which will be where our control wires go. I ordered from Northfield the factory fence. These are underhung from some tapped holes that existed um, from the factory and then these fence rails, and then of course the fence itself are new. You saw the insert a moment ago. That has been 
glued in place here and sanded to fit the table. And this is the insert, the uh, clearance insert for the blade. I had to modify this a little bit to get it to fit in the right place. And it's actually a little small right now. The way that this saw worked, the blade was slightly uh, too far left to fit well. So I ended up having to remove quite a bit of material on this left side. And I'm gonna have to figure out some way to anchor this more permanently. There's facility for drilling and tapping underneath, but I think I'll probably just shim it in some way. And a lot of work has been done on the electrical controls. I'll show you that now. Here's the saw's original motor controller. This is essentially just a giant switch with some overload protection via some things called heaters. I think they're actually missing um, these. I think they've been bypassed just to make the thing run. The, the point of the heaters is that if enough current flows through, the heaters will trip the, the switch and that's your, like a circuit breaker. This is just a heavy duty mechanical switch that can handle the braking current of the motor. But other than that, there's, there's no brains in here. It's just three phase in, three phase out. And since I don't have three phase power, this isn't gonna work for me. I also wanted to replace it because it's not very ergonomic and with a, a big saw, and my desire to keep all of my fingers. These buttons are hard to access. They were way on the side of the saw. As you can see, the stop button really doesn't stick out. So it's time to go, and I'll show you what we're replacing this with. Here is our motor drive controller. I've shown you the control panel in other shots. This will mount in the box on the top of the saw. This is the actual brain of the machine. Now, this box is actually pretty tight. I spent a lot of time drilling and cutting in it, uh, making a million holes. And I wanted this to be as compact as I could make it because of where it fits on the saw. A large enclosure, I don't have a very big shop, but I didn't want an enclosure to take up more floor space. So this is a 10 by 10 by six enclosure. And this is as big as I can get mounted where I wanted to put it. And that's meant some creative arrangement of components here, but I think it's gonna work out fine. I'll just walk you through what we have. This cord on the left is the input, which connects to this line filter. And this isn't really for the purpose of filtering power for the sake of the bandsaw, but rather this is supposed to help the rest of my shop and home here to not be affected by the electrical noise that the variable frequency drive spits out. This then goes into the disconnect switch. I'll show you the lid and the handle on this in a moment. It has a shaft that sticks out of the box and actually the, the control handle is on the door. Out of there we have our terminal block and then I have a pilot light that shows when power is on. And this thing does require venting. So in the enclosure, I've drilled some holes in the bottom for an air intake. And then I've got a louver on the back, which blows down and that will keep the sawdust out of my enclosure. As I mentioned, this is pretty tight and I have some of the components in right now. And here is the motor drive. And this fits with not a lot of extra room. And so I'm kind of wiring this as I go. I have to mount this to the side of the enclosure, connect in um, the motor wires here, the feed wires, which I've already got run at the top, and then all of the control wires that go to the saw. But before I did that, I wanted to show you the enclosure and how I made this fit. Here is the door of the box. I pulled the hinge pin to get this off and drilled holes for this disconnect switch. It's just got off and on and it mates with that shaft that sticks out of the box that just pops in this hole and then this knob turns that for the disconnect itself. I have used these in the past on other machine rebuild projects and they're pretty neat. I like what they look like. They look very professional and they're rated for uh, breaking the, the amount of current of the saw. So I think that's gonna work out great. Gotta get this on, there we go. So there is, there's the handle driving our disconnect switch. 
I'm going to go finish up mounting the variable frequency drive in here, and then I'll try to get it on the saw, and I'll see you back in a while. Well, with the level of misery and frustration that can only be known by someone who has attempted to work on a modern car, I got this attached. I decided to mount it below the motor. That was where the most free space was. The casting forced the box to be out as far as it is. I don't think that's a bad thing because then the door will have clearance as that sticks up above the outside of the box. But it was a little tricky to get in. I put a nut on the bottom of the existing motor bolt. This is just drilled and tapped into the casting. And so I have a nut that goes on the bottom of that inside the box. Same on the other side. And then I removed the motor fan housing so that I had better access and I was able to drill these two new smaller holes so there are four bolts holding this box on and it's nice and secure. You didn't see the silver box earlier. This is a 12 volt power supply that feeds the control panel for the uh, frequency drive. I have gone through the voltmeter and I have tested to make sure that I don't have any continuity where I'm not supposed to have continuity. So I'm hopeful that everything is fine. The tight quarters complicate this significantly. I think we're gonna be okay. Where we have to go next is I need to route these two control cables up to the control box. And we need to do something about this motor how this motor connector housing. This is how I received the saw. The other half of this box was lost somewhere to time. I don't think I have any reasonable way of getting one of those made, so I think I'm going to take what's here off and uh, modify an existing bell box to secure this so I don't have bare wires hanging out of the saw. I've laid out the old box on our new one it originally mounted like this, but I need to get the mirror image of this so that it will actually attach to the motor housing with the screws in the right place. Thankfully, this is square, so I just rotated it 90 degrees when I traced it. And we're going to hack away at this and uh, see if we can get this close enough to use. Here's our replacement motor junction box. I think that came out pretty well. Cut that on the mill and got it attached. Got the ground screw attached as it was before into the motor frame. So cover on there and that'll be done. Put the control box door on. That's ready to go. And the control cabling I routed kind of inside the saw frame. Uh, this isn't perhaps the uh, greatest way to do that, but without drilling holes into the casting, which is something I'm not excited about. I think this is actually fine. It's clear of anything that moves any uh, path of material. It's behind the, the blade column, so I think we're going to be okay there. That connects to our control panel. One of the Cat5 lines runs the serial interface on the back of the screen. We've got power and the blue pair is for the RS-45 data connection. The other one runs the switches and the potentiometer. Green is start, red is stop, and this is our speed control. This one is normally open, meaning when you push it, it makes contact. This one is normally closed, meaning the circuit is connected unless you push the button, and then it will break the connection, and that's the polarity that the frequency drive expects. So I think we're in good shape here. I'm gonna turn it on and we'll test our functionality and get it back together. We have power, we are ready to go. We are alive. It's hard to see from the video, but we're even going in the right direction. We have our speed control here. Have a bandsaw. Thanks for watching.